Hello guys, and welcome back. In this video, you will learn how to do easy and realistic interior lighting using Eevee in Blender 4.2. So if you're new here, like the video, subscribe, and let's have some fun with it. We will work on this scene, and I linked it down below if you want to download it. You will also need Blender 4.2 for the new Eevee, cause we will be working with that, so pause this and get it now if you haven't yet. We need to start with the world skylighting, and I would normally split the workspace to keep the camera on one side and work on the other, but I do go wild with it, so go your way. Now since we're on Eevee Engine, the sky textures won't do us much with the Nishita being limited to cycles, so I usually go with an HDRI, a bit heavier, but still more realistic. And for that, we need an environment texture, so add one in the world color. The best place to get free HDRI is Polyhaven. You can go there and search for indoor or outdoor ones. Both work great, but since I like bright lighting and really visible shadows, I will go with an outdoor HDRI. This one called Meadow 2 is nice to go with, but feel free to experience with other ones and download it once you're done. Here's the one we downloaded. I can open it in the environment texture, then switch to render view to see how it looks. This is the look you would get normally with Eevee, which sucks, not gonna lie, but with the 4.2 update, things become much nicer, and we will see that in a minute. What I need you to do first is to make sure that your HDRI settings have the shadows on, because this makes a huge difference. There's also the threshold and the angle values above that. You can keep the threshold on default and play with the angle to soften the skylight coming inside. A value of 1 or 2 should be fine. To the render settings, we will go through them from top to bottom, the main ones at least. First, let's up the samples for the viewport to 64 just to see things clear and enable the jittered shadows option under it. The final render samples can wait to the end, so just close it for now. I won't play with the shadow options, just leave it how it comes. The main thing to enable is the ray tracing. This one with the sky shadows is like 70 to 80% of Eevee new look, and inside it, there are a couple of values to adjust. Put the max roughness in the ray tracing to around 0 0.8 or 0 0.9. The screen tracing subtab has the precision and the thickness values. We can adjust those. The precision can go up to 0 0.8 as well. And the thickness is for you to play with. I mean, you can see the difference when we go from low value to 4 or 5. So go with the scene mode. Once you're done with the skylighting and EV settings, we can add another lamp, a sun maybe, or an area light, and we will use that to cast gobos inside, or tree shadows. So I will go with a sun, just add it to the scene, and rotate it to cast light inside the room. A problem that might occur, or will happen, but its effects can vary, is aligning the sun lamp with the sky's sun or the sky's light direction. Because if you don't, you can get some weird shadows. Like here on the wall, you can clearly see two light sources casting inside, and it doesn't feel right. And you can in some cases wiggle things around to make them invisible or blend together. But an easier way is to use this add-on called Sun Aligner. You will find the link for it in the description. It isn't new or anything, it's just gold, so get it from here for free and try to download the latest version. Then, once in Blender, 
we can open the preferences for the add-on settings. Choose to install from your desk, select the file you downloaded, and make it rain. I mean, align. You can press N to find the HDRI Sun Aligner, and it's super easy to use. Just select your sun, let the add-on calculate the sun's position, then hit Rotate Active Object. And here you have both light sources aligned, and the sun is clear as the day Frodo joined Gryffindor. The light from the sun lamp might need a bit of softness in it, so play with the angle value to get that, and also, while you are there, top the strength to 9 or 10 because it's still dark as hell inside, and turn on the shadow jitter. Might also increase the sky strength, something like 1.5 or less, we will see before the render. The damn light bleeding on this corner bugs me. And I will be honest, I would leave this small area if I'm not making a tutorial, and just fix it in post. But since we're here, we can isolate the wall which makes the problem, then add thickness to it with the solidify modifier, that will be an easy and fast fix for light bleeding, period. So select the wall in edit mode, press 3 for face selection, and hit P to separate the faces you want. I do have an auto smooth modifier on it, since I did the modeling with a previous version, so let's delete that and search for the solidify modifier to fix this once and for all. The glass material in the window is from the kit library, and it's one that I often use with EV renders because it's dope. You can find it in the kit library up top, and I think any Blender beginner or a pro should have it. It will spare you a lot of waste time. You can play with the transparency in it, or change the colors to suit your room and get some good results by adjusting those two values alone. To boost the lighting inside, and since this wall on the left side of the camera is outside the shot or the frame, we can hide it from the layers in both the viewport and the final render by turning off those two icons. After that, I can add an area light from this direction, make it cast inside with a bit of angle toward the floor. It's as if we're boosting the sky lighting from this area, so hit Shift A to add the area light and use the R and S shortcuts to rotate and scale the light. R as in rotate, S as in scale, G as in G move. It's stupid sometimes. You gotta work with what you have. Anyway, once you're done with the rocket science of placing your light from this direction, go to its settings and up the power. Don't make it obvious that it's from an artificial light. Keep it cool. I can copy this light with Shift-D and move it to the back opening to add another light source there. Maybe scale it to fit that area and do the same with the settings. Play with the power and softness in it to blend it with the scene while boosting the light.
For the gobos, or the tree shadows inside, we can add a mesh plane from the add menu and choose a PNG for the gobos. And if you're wondering where to get this from, keep wondering. The rest can go to Google and search for gobos textures, then look for this kind of images. It doesn't matter if it's with a transparent background or not. If it is, well, that's dope. However, if the image has a background, you can run it though an online image background removal, which might drop the quality a bit, but it's manageable. Once you download an image, just upload it to this site or any other site to do your work since you're lazy and get the PNG shadows to add it to the mesh plane. We can now move this shadow plane outside in front of the window and try to scale it up or move it back and forth to get the best result from it. This looks fine, and if I bring back the sofa, it will drop nicely on it. And that's what I need. I don't know what you need, but I'm satisfied. I mean, it looks nice. So let's first fix the render samples to around 600, then double the resolution by making this 200%. You can also play with the color management if you like, but as I said, the post process is the place where I do those fixes. I might add some light probes, maybe a reflection sphere at first to cover the entire scene. So add it and scale it up. I can also add an irradiance volume to bake the light inside this corner alone. So add one and make it fit the area in front of the camera. Make sure those points are not intersecting with the walls, then go to the volume settings and bake the light. Actually, this is my first time using the light probes in Blender 4.2, but in previous versions, if those points from the volume intersect with the mesh, they will leave a black area once you bake the indirect lights inside, so better to mine that from the start. You can delete the bake if any problem happens, and you can now see the difference with and without the irradiance volume. Once you're done, just hit render and wait for around two minutes to get this render. Then with another two minutes for post-process, it will become like this, which is dope. It's still not cycles, but it's more than half the way there, so have fun with it. And that's it. Do like and subscribe if you're watching this up till now, because the commitment in you is great. So until next time, stay sharp. Goodbye.